Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. And this is one of those cases where you can actually, she can shift that. She can start off by taking Frank's benefit at $1,000 per month while she continues to work and therefore improve the eventual amount that she's going to get. Uh, or while she, while she waits, and then later be able to claim more money if, 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 as basic, it, on her own. So she has the ability, simply by virtue of being Frank's spouse, to get 50% of what Frank would have collected, as long as she waits until she is full retirement age before she collects that. So one of the things that folks can do Frank and Mary, let's take the Frank and Mary example. Frank and Mary are both 66. Frank has the option of filing but not collecting his benefit, right? He can file and suspend with Social Security. There's some specific language that needs to be on his form when he files and suspends. He can file and suspend. Um, if Mary, Mary, and then at that point, Frank is not collecting benefits and therefore the amount that he's ultimately going to get continues to increase. Remember, all the way up to 132% of his benefit when he is 70 years old. Um, Mary, though, if Mary wants to, because Frank has filed, can now file for her spousal benefit. That benefit is going to vary depending on how old she is, but if she's at full retirement age, it's going to be half of what Frank would have gotten. So Frank can file and suspend. And Mary, if she's not crazy about her job, can then retire, right, and simply take Frank's spousal benefit or take her own benefit, right, or take her own benefit. She really has, she has the, the choice, right? Or she can take Frank's spousal benefit um, for that period of time from 66 to 70, and then she can switch out of that, and then, she can t and then if she's worked really hard, she can then take her own benefit plus those, ex those extra funds. But... There, is no, uh, there are no extra benefit from Frank's waiting as opposed to filing and suspending. So the amount that she gets is going to be 50% of his PIA, 50% of the amount of money that he would have gotten had he retired at 66. Even if he waits and, and, and doesn't start collecting until he's 70. So she never gets more in her spousal benefit by virtue of his waiting beyond 66, right? Um, what about Susie? We haven't talked about Susie. Susie was the fling that, he, that Frank had when he was in college in the 60s before he actually met Mary. And the question is, and then they were married for quite a while and then got divorced and then Frank, you know, had s settled down and then married Mary. They don't talk about, Mary, about Susie very much. Nor do they want to. They don't want to hear from Susie and Susie really doesn't want to hear from them. But the main thing that Susie should know is that if she is divorced, right, and they were married for at least 10 years, and she is currently unmarried, currently unmarried. Not that she hadn't married again, but that she may be married and divorced. So she is currently unmarried, and she's at least 62. Um, then she can get the exact same spousal benefit that Mary could get. And it doesn't cause Mary's benefit to go down in any way. The two of them, the two, Sp the spouse and the ex-spouse can be both getting the exact same benefit by virtue of the fact that they were both lucky enough to live with Frank, right? Except that Susie has to have been married to him for 10 years. We're going to mention a little bit later on that Mary, even though she's currently married to him, has to have been married to him for at least six months in order to be able to get this benefit. But as I point out, that has no effect on Mary's benefit. So Susie has to have been married for 10 years, she has to be currently single in order to get this benefit. And by the way, if she applies for Frank's benefit, there is no notice, notice that goes to Frank either, right, or to Mary. So no one's going to know that Susie is just kind of out there collecting her money. Um, 
survivor benefits. So there are your own benefits, right? There are your spouse's spousal benefits by virtue of being a spouse. And then there are your spouse's benefits by virtue of being the widow, by virtue of being the survivor of you. How do the spousal benefits work? If Frank has not waited until he was 66, but claims his benefits early, you will recall that depending on when he claimed them, he would be getting a reduced percentage of what his full benefit was. And you may recall, we, I pointed out that the lowest percentage that he could get was 75%, right? That was if he claimed at 62 and his benefit was gonna, not gonna hit until um, 66. Well, if, Fra if, if, if Frank dies, right, um, and he claimed benefits before his full retirement age, right, then Mary's benefit is based on Frank's benefit, because remember one of the things that we talked about is that Mary is entitled to Frank's benefit if Frank dies. Except that, there's just this one little exception, exception to help out Mary. If, if Frank had started getting benefits right away at age 62, which meant he was only getting 75% of what he was entitled to, Mary can opt to take the higher of, the higher of what Frank could have claimed, um, or 80 2.5%, so she can get a little bit more, even though Frank was getting the minimum possible that he could have gotten. Um, if Frank claimed after full retirement age, then the survivor um, it can get the benefit of those delayed credits, right? So while as a spouse, the spousal benefit is always 50 no more than 50% of what Frank would have gotten at full retirement age, that PIA number, right? And doesn't, and, and she can't get 50% of the extra money he gets by virtue of waiting until 70. That's different if she's a widow, right? So if Frank has waited until 70 and to, to start claiming benefits and therefore has claimed the, 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 the maximum benefit of 132% of his PIA and drops dead the next day, Mary Clay can get the entire benefit for the rest of her life. Okay, so there are regular benefits, there are these spousal benefits, and then there are the survivor benefits. And now, how much does Mary get in her survivor benefit? Well, it's based on, as we've just talked about, it's based on what Frank's benefit would have been, right? But it is also related to when Mary claims it. So, if Mary claims early, even, so for example, say if Frank has gotten his whole his PIA, whatever his PIA was, and say that was $2,000. If Mary claims early, that is before she is 66, then just like in the, spousal, uh, in the spousal deduction, in the spousal case, Mary can only get a fraction of what Frank would have gotten. If Mary claims at full retirement age though, if she waits until full retirement age, then she can get 100% of whatever it was that Frank could have gotten. Um, Mary can always switch to this higher benefit after Frank dies, even if Mary had been collecting based on her own number and now wants to claim based on Frank's number, she can now switch to that higher number. Because when Frank dies, Mary does have to choose. This is also kind of a myth that, that, that if your husband dies, you can get his or her benefit while keeping your own. You can't. At that point, you have to pick. So there really is a, a significant reduction typically in people's social security benefits when one spouse dies just because that because one of the spouses social security benefits is no longer arriving by the way i'm just going to mention one other thing this is all assuming that frank and mary have worked in in the private sector <coughs> and don't have public state pensions Be, in, in, here in massachusetts and in i believe seven other states there are a whole special set of rules that apply if one of the spouses um, um, was part of the state retirement system because that handful of states decided, in many cases many years ago, that they were so much smarter than the federal government at investing money that they were just going to keep all the money in their retirement system and invest it their smart way as opposed to being in the federal system, right? But as a result of that, the federal government said, well, if you haven't paid into the system during your life, right, and you're getting a pension as a result of having been in a different system, right? Then we're going to take some percentage of that pension right, and subtract it from what you can get in Social Security. I'm actually going to do kind of a specialized presentation just on that 
because it's very complicated. So, a couple of quick quizzes. Frank's PIA is $2,000 per month. Frank files at age 62. So he is going to be getting 75% of his PIA or $1,500 a month. Frank then dies. How much is Mary's survivor benefit? The answer is, depends, depends. The maximum that she can get, remember, uh, because of this exception to the rule is 82.5% of 2000 or 1650. But the question is, has, is Mary waiting until she's 66? If she waits until 66, then she can get all 1650. If, for example, she files early, and by the way, for a survivor benefit, you can actually file before age 62. You can file as young as 60. Or if I recall correctly, if you're disabled, you can file as young as 50. Uh, if she files at age 60, her benefit is only 71.5% of that number of 1650 or $1,180. So to figure out the answer to the question, you always have to know, you have to know when you, th that Frank died. You also have to know, though, when Mary is taking the benefit. Quiz number two, Frank's PIA is $2,000. Frank files at age 70. And therefore, his benefit is 132% of that, or $2,640. Frank dies the next day. Poor Frank is always dropping off in my case. How much is Mary's survivor benefit? If she is 66 or older, her whole benefit is $2,640. If, for example, she is only 60, her benefit is 71.5% of that, right? That's like her worst case. And once again, those numbers will last for the rest of her life plus the COLA, plus the cost of living increases, okay? Uh, and that's a few random rules about these, all of this. Um, in order for you to be uh, entitled to a survivor benefit, you have to have been married for nine months, right? This was to avoid some of the issues with um, um, people kind of trolling in Florida for people with a lot of Social Security money. Um, uh, you, the survivor has to be at least 60, right, or 50 if disabled, even to get the reduced benefit. Um, and you need to be, and the survivor needs to be full retirement age in order to get the full benefit. Um, in order for um, Mary to get this benefit, if she was, if, she, if, in order for her to get the widow's benefit, she cannot have remarried, this is a piece of trivia, before age 60. If you remarry um, before that age, you lose the benefit. If you wait, um, you actually get to keep the survivor benefit even though you're married to a new person, right? Uh, and remember the, year, the 10 years for Susie, right? 10 years, Susie can get both the, 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 um, um, the, the spousal benefit and the survivor benefit as long as she was married to um, Frank for at least 10 years. And as long as she didn't remarry, as long as she is not married um, at the time that Frank dies. So, with all of that information in mind, so when do you apply? Um, the information that I gave you is kind of one factor, but you can see how it plays into all of these issues, right? One of your questions is your health. Uh, if, you, if you are not well, and once again, a lot of the work that I do is with people who are very concerned about just being not well, and whether they have Alzheimer's or they have whatever, um, and they're not gonna, they may not live very long. If you're not well, then it may make sense to take the lower benefit, even the, you know, the full retirement benefit or, or the PIA or something lower than that, because the extra money that you're getting every month, it takes a while for that to catch up with the fact that you're getting that extra money per month by virtue of having not gotten any money in some earlier years. So if you're 70, you start off getting 132% of whatever you would have gotten per month but at the same time, you got zero of what you would have collected if you collected starting at 66, for 67, 68, and 69. Um, those lines actually cross at about age 81. So if you think that you are going to live past 81 and, and, and there are no financial issues, right, if, you've got, if you don't just like desperately just need the money because the point of this is you know, in the long run, we're all dead. I mean, the, you know, and you're not just doing this for your kids. And, and when you die, the money stops. It isn't like your kids are going to get a bonus because you died earlier. Right? So 
if you're, if you're not healthy, then you just may decide that you want to start taking the benefits early. 